Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. Hey guys, Fred is back with us. Frederick, Freddy. Uh, okay, how did Portugal happen? If you're new to the channel, my name's Connor. I love to learn about history through YouTube recommendations. You guys are great. Join the Discord. Original video at the top description below. Discord link right below that. Let's go. Woo! Okay. How you doing, Fred? You, you good? The history of Portugal is a long and interesting one. Its influence is widespread and not only did it affect the rest of the European continent, but its sailors bridged the world's oceans. Few parts of the world would be the same were it not for Portugal. But where did this nation come from? Who founded Portugal and- Pausing already. Um, so I, I see Portugal and Spain and some Italian sailors, but mainly Portugal and Spain being the first kind of major colonizers and you know france and the uk and to an extent germany and the us and russia to an extent um you know jumped on the bandwagon and really made it but the weird one are the netherlands um the dutch were they ever like at the tip top of the game like the spanish and portuguese or french and british or were they just kind of always kind of in the mix, but never really a major military power to protect all of their uh, colonial assets, I guess. The same were it not for Portugal. But where did this nation come from? Who founded Portugal and dwelt and were it not for Portugal? But its sailors bridged the world's oceans. Few parts of the world would be the same were it not for Portugal. But where did this nation come from? Who founded Portugal and dwelt, to put it bluntly, how did Portugal happen? In order to find this out, we need to travel back to the turn of the 12th century when- I'm more interested in how Portugal stayed a thing. The Iberian Portugal happen. In order to find this out, we I'll need to travel pausing. back to the turn of the 12th century when the Iberian Peninsula looked like this. In the south, it was dominated by the Almoravid Emirate, and the majority of the people in Iberia at this time were Muslims who had, over the centuries, converted from Christianity after the Islamic conquest of the 8th century. Whereas in the north, Christianity Castile endured and as the religion of the small independent states there, and these northern states were the kingdoms of Leon, Navarre, and Aragon, as well as the county of Barcelona. And these states were, to put it mildly, not what exactly keen on their... Sorry. ...as well as the county of Barcelona. And these states were, to put it mildly, not exactly keen on their southern neighbours. The way they dealt with these issues was via in-depth discussions and, just kidding, crusade Inquisition. Time. These oh, crusades crusade. brought the devout from other European states to help, and one such man was Henry of Burgundy. In 1095, he went south, got married to the King of Castile's illegitimate daughter, and was given the county of Portugal to rule. Long story short, he died. His wife had an argument with their son and heir Alfonso, war, which Alfonso won. He exiled his mother to a convent and then ruled as the Count of Portugal after 1128. A short 11 years later, Alfonso decided that being a count wasn't as cool as being a king and so renounced his fealty to Lyon. There was a war because obviously which Alfonso won and after this, Portugal became an independent kingdom and Alfonso was crowned Alfonso I. Also, before continuing, the name Portugal derives from the settlement of Porto Cali, which eventually became the city of Porto. As you'll have noticed, the fledgling kingdom of Portugal is quite a bit smaller than the one we know today and this is where outside help came in. So, the Knights Templar had previously helped Alfonso in his war for independence and they had been generously rewarded for their help. And Alfonso could count on their help in his plans to one, preserve his kingdom's independence, and two, strengthen it by expanding southwards. And by sheer luck, in 1144, the Crusader state of Edessa fell to the Seljuks, and so the Pope, doing what medieval popes did best, called for a crusade. Many answered the call, and those from these lands, rather than go the overland route, opted Another to sail one. around Iberia on their way. They stopped off in Portugal, where they met Alfonso, who asked for their help. The Crusaders weren't really interested in helping at first until Alfonso sweetened the deal with cash, specifically any and all of the spoils from helping him take the strategically important city of Lisbon. The crusade- I thought the whole point of going on a crusade is to take back the Holy Land so you can have an assured place in heaven or whatever. Now they want the money. It is in the Portuguese laid siege to Lisbon in 1147, and it wasn't too long before the city surrendered due to starvation. For many, that was enough crusading, and whilst a couple of thousand crusaders continued on their way to the Holy Land, most, notably the English, opted to settle in Portugal. Portugal's southward expansion would continue until its borders reached this in the 13th century, and Lisbon was made the country's capital. Portugal's place in history had begun. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and thank you for watching. With thank you for making. Awesome channel. Has always been an awesome channel. One of my favorite channels. So good at uh, giving you a quick overview of a more broad, of a more 
broad subject uh, that makes you kind of want to dive in and, and learn more about the details. Uh, all right, guys, we'll be back with another one very soon. Say hi to Freddie. Freddie, say bye. See you guys next time. Soon.